Hello everybody. We will be constructing a ferrous wheel using laser cut MDF boards and controlling it with the help of an Arduino Uno. Here's how the model works. To build this model, we have used laser cut MDF board and glued it together using a quick fix adhesive like Fevistick. You can use any other adhesive that you deem fit. The first step is to construct this model on Fusion 360. So here's a CAD model of the Ferris wheel and this is how we constructed it. As you can see, we have provided wooden spacers and washers also using the laser cut work. These washers here also act as a drive socket for the DC motor. The next step is to use the SCAD model to generate SVG or PDF files which can be fed into a laser cutting machine. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics and it tells the laser cutting head to follow a path to cut out the desired shape from the MDF board. I have used 2mm MDF boards for this project. To generate the SVG files, the first step is to create a DXF file containing the outline of the object. There is an easy way to do this. I create a sketch plane as you can see here and on this sketch plane I have used project geometry to project the geometry of this object as a two dimensional surface on this plane. By doing this process repeatedly we generate a series of sketches. So here are the generator sketches one by one, the bottom horizontal plane. The next step is to save these as DXF files. These DXF files can then be opened up in a program like Inkscape. In Inkscape, I have generated a canvas of size 567 to 567 pixels because this corresponds to an MDF board size of 15 cm into 15 cm. That's the size of the MDF board that I have used and this DXF image has been imported into this SVG image. The scalable vector graphics image can be directly used in some laser cutting machines. However, in my case, the shop that I went to used CorelDRAW and because of the inconsistency between the SVG file generated by Inkscape and the way Corel was reading it, we converted it into a PDF file for easier cutting. Now that we are ready with these pieces, we can glue them together to generate a mo model which looks exactly like this. The next step is to add the control components. For this, we will be using a DC motor, the LM293D motor driver IC, some tactile switches and jumper cables. A closer look at the tactile switches and the LM293D motor driver IC. We plug all these into a breadboard as shown. You can see that I am powering the circuit with a MB102 breadboard power supply. Let's peek into the brains of this project. As you can see, there are three tactile switches. The first tactile switch is for increasing the speed. The second one decreases the speed and the third tactile switch is used for conveying to the Arduino to flip the direction from forward to backward and vice versa. So the algorithm is to control the motor speed using pulse width modulation. The pulse width modulation signals have a value between 0 to 255. You can watch my detailed video on motor speed control using PWM on the same channel. The code here steps up the motor speed in units of 5 and there is an additional logic that the direction is not to be flipped if the motor happens to be running. This makes sure that the DC motor doesn't get damaged. 
As you can see on the LCD screen, the status of the motor is displayed. F denotes the forward direction, S denotes that it has stopped, zero denotes the PWM value that is being conveyed to the motor. We want our buttons to be really responsive. That is, as soon as we press our buttons, the Arduino Uno should act. For this, we make use of interrupts. This is a block diagram of the code that I have used. The first step is to declare the variables, then to write a loop which runs repeatedly. This loop is interrupted by interrupts, pin change interrupts to be precise. One of these pin change interrupts is for speed increase, the second one is for decreasing the speed and the third one is for flipping the direction of the motor. This loop also calls a function to write the speeds and the direction to the motor. As you can see here, we have defined certain constant variables. Pin 8 is configured to watch for interrupts and if this interrupt is triggered, the speed is ranked up. Pin 9 is configured to watch for interrupts and in case a pin change interrupt is triggered on this pin, the speed is decreased. Similarly, pin 10 is also configured to watch for interrupts and in case a pin interrupt is triggered on this pin, then the direction is changed from forward to backward subject to the speed being zero. The motor driver IC is connected to enable pin 6. This is the PWM pin which gives the PWM signal for controlling the speed of the motor. If the forward pin happens to be high and the backward pin happens to be low, then the motor rotates in what we have defined as the forward direction. And in case forward pin happens to be low and backward pin happens to be high, then the motor rotates in the backward direction. Steps is a variable which ensures that the speed changes in steps of 5 units. Here is a closer look at the three pin change interrupts. The first pin change interrupt, as we said, was on pin 8, and this toggles the variable ink, and ink is set to true. This informs the loop that the speed has to be incremented by 5 units. If the interrupt is triggered on pin 9, then ink is set to false, telling the Arduino looping through the code to, to reduce the speed by 5 units. The third and the last interrupt tells the Arduino to toggle the variable forward. If it's true, then the motor moves in the forward direction and if it happens to be false, then the motor moves in the backward direction. You might have noticed that there is a variable called allo which is toggled to false in all the three interrupts. This is basically used for debouncing the switch. We are using mechanical switches and these mechanical switches tend to oscillate between high and low for some time before settling at a certain value. The allow flag tells the Arduino to give a slight delay and this enables us to debounce the switches. Now we look at the function run wheel. This function accepts three variables. The first can have values of S and R where S denotes that the motor has stopped and R denotes that the motor is running. The character set dir can have the values of F and B in denoting the direction of the motor. And the byte variable set speed basically is analog return to the enable pin and this sets the PWM value which is conveyed to the motor. You can see that if the direction happens to be F then forward pin is high and backward pin is low and vice versa. This is the logic that we just described a short while ago. Here's what's happening inside the loop variable. The loop variable basically operates by watching the values of these flags. As we just saw, the flags increase, forward and direction change are flipped in the interrupt functions. The interrupt functions have been deliberately kept extremely brief. The only activity that happens inside the interrupt functions is to flip the value of these variables. This is to make sure that the interrupt function calls are extremely quick and they do not interrupt the functioning of the Arduino as such. In the main loop, we have an if loop to update the status of the motor from S to R, where S denotes stop and R denotes run. You can see here the call to the run wheel function. If start happens to be true, then state of start will be equal to R, which means that the motor is in running condition. Similarly, if forward happens to be true, then DIR of forward would be F, which tells the run wheel function to make sure that the motor rotates in the direction that we have defined as forward. Speed is the value which was written to the enable pin by the run wheel function.
here are the other components of the loop this is the if loop which increments the speed of the motor if the ink flag happens to be true then the speed is ramped up do note that the speed is limited between the ranges of 75 to 115 we noticed through experiments that the speed greater than 120 made the model spin rather too fast and speeds less than a PWM value of 75, the motor was not able to spin the ferrous wheel. This is the if loop for reducing the speed. You can notice that the ink variable is set to false. If the speed happens to be less than 0, then the speed is directly set to 0. In all other cases, the speed is reduced in steps of 5. And all these loops, you can notice that the status of the Arduino is also printed to the LCD screen. We are using an I2C LC for this project and do watch our detailed videos on explaining how the I2C LCDs work. Here's another if loop which watches for change in the variable dir change. Dir change is again a volatile variable which is being flipped to indicate that the direction of the motor has to be changed. Do note that this variable is set only if the speed of the motor happens to be zero. This ensures that the motor is not damaged due to sudden speed changes. And with all this, we are ready to go. The code is written to the Arduino and here's how our model works. So here's our model set to forward and the state is S or stopped, that is the speed happens to be zero. We press the tactile switch to ramp up the speed. It starts from 75 and increases in steps of 5 right up to 120. On reaching 120, you would find that the speed doesn't increase any further. Now we reduce the speed. The speed again reduces in steps of 5. And once it hits 75, you would see that it drops to 0. Now we flip the direction to back. And when we ramp up the speed, the motor spins in the opposite direction. Again, the speed starts from 75 and goes right up to 120. No further increase. Now we reduce the speed again to 75 and then to 0. Again, the motor sets spinning in the forward direction. We can also use the reset button as an emergency stop. If you loved building this model, then do subscribe to this channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.